We're all here this morning. See that we're not a very big crowd this morning. Must be uh, lots of us uh, away or feeling sick. But the topic that I'd like to uh, have a look at this morning is uh, one that concerns each and every one of us. If we're a Christian. And that's uh, discipleship and the terms that uh, the Lord has uh, laid down for us. I know that uh, quite often in my life as a Christian, I've had to give myself a, a good shaking up and a, and a good uh, clean up. I find that uh, cleaning up this temple of God's is, is a full-time job, sweeping out the cobwebs of laziness and the stains of self-centeredness, as well as all the clutter and everything that I allow into my life. Uh, the clutter, it obscures my vision of uh, who I am and, uh, and where I'm going. Uh, this shaking up uh, process, it's, uh, it's necessary, I find, to uh, put things in a proper order. Quite often I find uh, myself at the top of the list, and uh, that's not where God intended me. He intended that he should have that place of honor. And uh, it takes discipline to, uh, to clean up our, our lives and to rearrange our lives just in the same way that uh, my wife uh, has to discipline herself to uh, clean up our home and to uh, keep it nice and clean and tidy. It takes discipline also for us to uh, clean up our bodies and to uh, shape up our uh, physical bodies as well as our uh, spiritual bodies. Um, lack of discipline in our lives as well as all the clutter that uh, we allow into them, it uh, perverts our perspective of who we are and, uh, and who God is. And if we are uh, God's children, then we owe it to our Father to let him be God and not to challenge him for uh, the throne, but submitting ourselves to his authority and then, and only then can we follow him. We must lay hold of the teachings of Jesus Christ and apply them to our lives as good disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, a group of Jewish believers that Jesus was talking to, uh, he said unto them, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And... Uh, True discipleship means that a strict adherence to the Word of God and to the teachings of Christ. Uh, the Lord made strict demands on all those that would be his disciples. Uh, demands that are, for the most part, overlooked in uh, today's uh, Christianity. And uh, a Christianity that some, uh, someone has termed easy believism. And what that simply means is that uh, once we're saved, once we have believed, we can go and live like the devil for the rest of our lives. Or uh, another concept of Christianity is that anything goes, that uh, whatever we offer the Father is good enough. And uh, this isn't what the Lord has intended. As well as the world's idea of living, it says that, uh, that anything goes, but for the Christian, living should uh, mean following the Savior of the world in his footsteps and surrendering our lives unconditionally to uh, uh, his mastership. Um, Uh, first of all, what is a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, quite simply, a disciple, as the uh, dictionary defines it, is a learner and is applied to the Lordship of, uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, the word also implies not only a, an acceptance in the mind to the teachings of Jesus Christ, but also in the heart, which is manifested in a proper uh, way of life. Uh, real discipleship means putting into practice what our minds have learned. Just as James has said that uh, faith without works is dead, I believe that uh, true discipleship without uh, proper and full obedience is a lie. Before uh, going into our study this morning, there's a question that uh, each and every one of us uh, must ask ourselves, uh, one that's very important to the would-be disciple of Christ. Uh, the question is, are you born again? And I... Uh, hope that all would ask themselves that. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says that the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. And then it goes on to say in verse 14 that the natural man, that is the one that is uh, not born again, receiveth not the things of God, uh, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned or spiritually taught. Uh, the point that I'm uh, trying to make is that uh, one must possess the Spirit of God to... Uh, understand the teachings of Christ as they concern the principles of uh, discipleship as well as the uh, spirit of God within them to enable uh, them to uh, live a life 
of discipleship for Christ. Um, the road which Jesus beckons each and every one of us to follow, uh, it's a life of, of continuous uh, following after him, and it's a supernatural life. And uh, none of us would have us within us the, the power to, uh, to live it. Uh, Ephesians 6.12 says that, um, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the, the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is that we wrestle against the devil and his hordes, and we wrestle against a wor the world system which, which Satan is the head of. And uh, I know, speaking for myself, that I'm just not uh, capable to, uh, to deal with it. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome this opposition. And not only this opposition as from Satan, but our own lusts and desires as well. We need the Holy Spirit to uh, enable us to overcome uh, lusting after uh, uh, a sinful way of life. It's no wonder that Jesus said, you must be born again. And uh, I wish that all of you would ask yourselves this question today, if you are uh, born again or not. And if you find that you're not, then determine today to uh, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, many dear and sin sincere folk believe that uh, Christianity, that one becomes a Christian by uh, living a Christian life. And this just isn't so. A person becomes a Christian by being born again. And it's something that we all have to get straight in our minds. What is Christianity? And uh, are all Christians disciples? Well, I feel that uh, if a Christian isn't a disciple, well, he should be. Uh, true Christianity, it's an all-out commitment, a never-looking-back dedication uh, to the Lordship of Jesus. It's uh, putting our whole beings into uh, the service for our Lord. Jesus isn't uh, looking for people who are only willing to give up their Sunday mornings in service for him, or even two or three days of the week. He's not looking for people who are going to uh, shuffle their feet lazily after him in uh, his footsteps, but he's looking for soldiers and for hard workers. And he's looking today as he looked 2,000 years ago uh, for people like this, people that are willing to drop all and to uh, and follow him, uh, people that are would jump to the task of glorifying the Heavenly Father. Um, he's looking for people who are willing to uh, forego life's ambitions and uh, life's pleasures for a life of unending and, and uh, unconditional surrender in service to others. You know, that way of life, it might not seem too appealing, you know, for going of life's pleasures and uh, letting uh, go of our uh, vain dreams that we have in, uh, in uh, service for others. And if it doesn't seem appealing uh, to us, then maybe we're looking at it in the wrong light and we should look at it in the uh, light of Calvary. Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses 6 to 8 says that, uh, who being in the form of God, that is Jesus, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, and he took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And Paul says that we are to have this mind. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. As I already stated, that uh, Jesus laid down uh, strict guidelines for all those that would be his disciples. Uh, these demands, they seem all too uh, severe and uh, so unreasonable and, uh, and so out of date uh, with today's Christianity. We often think of Christianity as uh, merely a guarantee of heaven and uh, an escape from uh, hell. And as uh, well as this, we feel that we have uh, every right to the best things that this world has to offer. It's easy for us to understand young men and women uh, entering the, the armed service and laying down their lives in defense of their country, but that blood, sweat, and tears uh, should characterize the life of a Christian. It's, uh, it's a little bit hard for us to grasp, and it's something that uh, most Christians uh, shy away from. But this is precisely the terms that the Lord has uh, uh, laid down for us. So I'd like to uh, look into these terms just a little bit now. And if you would, uh, turn in your Bibles to uh, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 14. For the first, uh, first term. And it's found in uh, verse 26. And this is often a misquoted uh, uh, verse. It says, 
If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Uh, what does this mean? Are we really to uh, hate our relatives? Can there be uh, no room in our hearts for anyone else but uh, Jesus Christ? Uh, is this what Jesus taught when uh, he was uh, here on the earth? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it was. Uh, in fact, in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, uh, he commanded his disciples to love one another. He said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, so that you love also one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Uh, I have a, a relative, I won't mention her name, but she professed to be saved uh, a number of years ago, uh, not that long ago. But she went about to just love everybody that went to her particular church, and, and she hated everybody else. She uh, went to the point that she uh, even looked down her nose at, uh, at her own family members. And there was a case of the fact that one day when she was walking down Queen Street, she saw her niece on the opposite side of Queen Street. So uh, the niece came over to say hi, and she walked right by her. She wouldn't say hi to her. She didn't want nothing to do with her. And uh, when Jesus says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, when you, by showing love one to another, uh, she just turned people away from the Lord. She took uh, this passage in Luke chapter 14 uh, way out of context, and, and, she, and uh, she hated everybody but the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and it was wrong. Uh, this passage isn't teaching that we should have uh, bad feelings towards our uh, family members. What it is teaching is that uh, our love for the Savior should be so great that all other loving relationships should seem, as, uh, by comparison, as a hatred. And that's simply what it's, uh, it means. Probably the most difficult uh, part of uh, verse 26 is the last part, where it says, and his own life also. Self-love and uh, self-centeredness is one of the greatest hindrances to uh, a life of a disciple. Uh, John chapter 12 verse 25 says that he that loveth his life uh, shall lose it and he that hateth his life in, the, in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Uh, the second term that the Lord has laid down is found in Matthew chapter 16. In fact, the next three uh, terms that I'd like to look at is found in the same chapter. Uh, in verse 24, and we can read uh, verse 25 as well. Uh, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will uh, save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake uh, shall find it. So we have, first of all, in verse 24, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Denying ourselves is the uh, next term. Uh, a denial of self is not the same thing as self-denial. Self-denial uh, has in view giving up certain possessions and certain pleasures. But the denial of self means a complete submission uh, to the Lordship of Jesus. It means uh, getting off the throne as rulers of our own lives and, and allowing Jesus to, uh, to have that place of honor. And I can't really think of anything that's more fitting and proper that he that created everything that we see around us today and who created the universe and who holds all those things together by his own power uh, should be in control of our own little lives. It only makes sense uh, that he should be. Uh, but the verse goes on to say, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. A deliberate choosing of the cross is the third term that the Lord has laid down. What does it mean to take up the cross? Well, the cross is uh, simply a pathway. It's a, a way of life that's uh, deliberately chosen. It's a pathway that uh, will bring you into areas of uh, persecution and uh, ridicule. It's a pathway that uh, uh, the cross symbolizes the shame and the abuse which the Lord heaped upon the Son of God, uh, which the world heaped upon the Son of God, and which the world will heap upon uh, you and, and I if we choose to stand against its, uh, the world's philosophy. Uh, John 15, uh, verses 18 through 20 says that uh, 
if I can quote that. If the world hates you, remember that it hated me before it hated you. Uh, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember uh, the words that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, uh, they will persecute you. And that's a quote from uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, we all know that what the world did to him. Uh, Peer pressure is probably one of the greatest uh, hindrances in my life, and, and it may be in yours too, uh, the life of a disciple, uh, discipleship. We have a tendency to worry more about uh, what others think of us than uh, worrying what the Lord thinks of us. And uh, because we want to be accepted by, by other people, uh, accepted by uh, the world's family, uh, those that are unsaved, we have a tendency to uh, compromise our faith, and uh, and we uh, start walking after the ways of the world, and we sort of turn our backs on the Lord, uh, simply to be accepted by others. Uh, there's a poem that I'd like to uh, read from you from uh, a book, uh, True Discipleship. I don't know if any of you have this at home, but it's uh, one that's really blessed me, and I've read it four or five times now. I've got tape on it to uh, hold it together and I thank you Mrs. Frizzell for the ministry that you have that I can go down to your store and uh, get books like this but the poem says Jesus I my cross have taken all to leave and follow thee naked poor despised forsaken thou from hence my all shall be perish every fond ambition all I've sought or hoped or known yet how rich is my condition God and heaven are still my own let the world despise and leave me. They have left my Savior too. Human hearts and looks deceive me. Thou art not like them untrue. Oh, while thou dost smile upon me, God of wisdom, love, and might, foes may hate and friends may disown me. Show thy face and all is bright. As by H.F. Light and uh, certainly uh, fitting and I think that we can all take a lesson from it. Uh, the fourth uh, term that I'd like to look at found in this chapter as it goes on to say let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me to understand what it means to uh, follow Christ we uh, simply have to look at uh, what characterized Jesus life while he walked on earth as a man uh, Jesus life was uh, one that was in perfect obedience to the will of the Father uh, he walked with in the power of the Holy Spirit um, it was a life of unselfish service for others. Uh, it was a life that was uh, of patience and long suffering in the face of uh, the gravest of wrongs. It was a life of zeal and of expenditure, of self control, of meekness, of kindness, of faithfulness, and of devotion. All these qualities are found in uh, Galatians chapter uh, 5 which are the fruit of the Spirit. Christ exhibited all the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, he commands that uh, we also do likewise. Okay, the fifth uh, term that I'd like to look at, I mentioned it just briefly in uh, my opening remarks, was uh, in, found in John chapter 8, verse 31. <clears throat> it was uh, Jesus speaking with... Uh, some Jewish believers and it says then said Jesus unto those Jews who believed on him if you continue in my word then you are my disciples indeed and I think the key word in this passage is the word uh, continue it's all well and good to start off in a blaze of glory uh, but the mark of a true disciple is uh, his endurance uh, to the bitter end Jesus said that if any man look back after putting his hand to, uh, hand to the plow, he's unfit for the kingdom of God. And the Lord, he doesn't want a spasmodic obedience uh, to the word, but he wants those who will uh, follow him in constant, uh, continuous obedience. And uh, speaking for myself again, I have to say that, uh, that I'm, and if you're honest with yourself too, probably a, a shameful bunch, uh, because how many of us have looked back you know, if only briefly for a moment at our old vain manner of living, as if looking back at uh, with some longing, as uh, longing after an old friend, 
and uh, I must admit that I'm, I look back uh, more than I'd uh, like to admit. Jesus has revealed all the splendor of heaven's glory that is waiting for us in heaven. And the things that are behind us, the, the vain manner of living, it's not even worth mentioning it when we compare it to with what uh, lays before us. Uh, so let's keep our eyes on uh, the heavenlies and uh, keep our eyes on the Lord. It's the only smart thing that, uh, that we can do. Uh, the sixth term that I'd like to look at, and it'll be the last one, is found in Luke chapter 14. If you'd like to turn there. And it's verse 33. And I'll just read it for you. It says, uh, So likewise, whosoever he is of you that forsaketh not all that he hath cannot be my disciple. This has got to be one of the most uh, unpopular verses in the whole Bible. I know I've uh, read it this probably over eight or ten times, and I've skipped over it hurriedly. And it's only when I uh, discovered I was going to uh, be speaking on this that I had to uh, ask myself why I never put too much of uh, uh, weight on this uh, passage. And it's probably because of the implication that's there and the terrific demand that the Lord puts on uh, his disciples. Uh, let's look at it again. And let me read it again. It says, So likewise, whosoever he is of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, uh, cannot be my disciple. Uh, did Jesus ask this demand of only a certain uh, few, his apostles, or maybe uh, those of his uh, day and age? It says, so likewise, whosoever he is, that's you, and that's me, and that's all Christians. There's no getting around it. It's uh, whosoever and that's, that's anybody. So it does apply to us, and it applies to us today. Uh, did Jesus say that we must be only uh, willing to uh, forsake all? No. Uh, he said, Whosoever he is of you that forsaketh not all. There was, there's no uh, room for uh, lateral movement there. It's, it's a forsaking or it's nothing. Did Jesus say that we're to uh, forsake only uh, a part of our wealth? No, he didn't. He says, uh, For whosoever he is of you that forsaketh not all that he has. Did Jesus say that maybe just a watered-down version of this uh, passage or a watered-down uh, discipleship was good enough? No, he said that he cannot be my disciple. We could probably come up with a thousand different reasons why this passage uh, doesn't mean what it says. Uh, after all our logic has run out, we might say, well, this is just one obscure passage and uh, maybe it's, it's wrong to put uh, too much of a, an emphasis on it or it's wrong to uh, build a doctrine around it. But is it obscure? I don't think so. Uh, didn't Jesus say this exact thing, same thing many times and in many different ways? Uh, sure he did. Um, to his disciples, he said, uh, as recorded just a couple of pages back in uh, Luke chapter 12, um, 32 and 34, it says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. And uh, in Luke chapter 18, uh, Jesus was speaking to a, a rich young ruler and the young ruler was asking him what he had to do to uh, inherit eternal life. And Jesus told him that he had to uh, obey the Ten Commandments. And he says, all these things have I uh, done from my youth. And uh, Jesus went on uh, to tell him what, what he had to do next to uh, inherit the kingdom of God. And verse 22, it says, Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, Sell what thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard these, he was very sorrowful, for he was rich. Um, the Lord isn't expecting us to uh, uh, sell everything that we own, everything that gives us pleasure in 
in laying down these terms, there is a proper balance. Uh, if, if your pleasure is uh, hunting or fishing or, or sports or, uh, or uh, watching TV occasionally or listening to uh, music, you know, these, these things are all well and good. Uh, everybody has its pressures in, the, in this world and especially uh, the, the Christian has uh, pressures. And uh, it's important for us to have our time of relaxation and, and uh, get away from those pressures uh, for a moment. So I'm not saying that you are to go out and uh, sell everything you have, but, but find a, a proper balance. Uh, and remember that uh, the key here probably is moderation. Whatever we do, uh, keep it in moderation. Don't let it uh, get the better of us. And, uh, and remember, whatever you do, do it unto the glory of, of God, and the balance will, uh, will find itself out. Um, the person that forsakes all, he's not going to become a, a shiftless loafer and, uh, and live off the welfare of others. He's going to work hard to uh, supply for the current necessities of his family and of, him, of himself. Uh, Jesus said, first seek ye the kingdom of God, and then all things would be added unto you. Well, we can uh, uh, take Jesus at his word. These then, uh, very hurriedly and... Uh, condensed are the terms that uh, the Lord has laid down for us and uh, I urge you to consider them if you think that the terms laid down here are too harsh or too severe or you think that they're asking too much or you think that maybe you don't have the power within yourself to uh, to live a life like this uh, I must ask you and ask myself who am I trusting in and, and where does our treasure lie does it lie in heaven are we building up a, a treasure in uh, heaven or are we building up our treasures here on earth uh, in light of what Christ has done for us uh, it's just a small thing that we can uh, do by following these terms uh, and, and how can we give him any less uh, than what he expects and, uh, and what he deserves in closing then I'd just like to uh, read a, a short uh, portion from uh, the diary of uh, Jim Elliot. It says, Father, let me be weak that I might lose my grasp on everything temporal, my life, my reputation, my possessions. Lord, let me lose the tension of the grasping hand. Even, Father, would I lose the love of fondling. How often I have released my grasp only to retain what I prized by harmless longing, the fondling touch. Rather, open my hand that I might receive the nail of Calvary as Christ was opened, that I, releasing all, might be released unleashed from all that binds me now. He thought heaven, yea, equality with God, not a thing to be clutched at. So let me release my grasp. Let's pray. Our dear and gracious Father, we just thank you for this time together, this morning that you've given to us to look into your word. Father, the terms that you have set down before us, they, they are hard, Father, for us to, uh, to bear but, Father, we know that if we keep our eyes on the heavenlies, we keep our eyes where they belong on the Lord, that these things would be a joy to us and that uh, they would make our heart glad to, to live a life like this. But Father, we do not have it within ourselves to live this type of life, and we need you, and we just pray that you would strengthen and guide us and that you would renew our minds, Father, uh, that we might be good disciples, not only just Christians, but disciples of yours we just commit the rest of this meeting into your hands and we pray for a blessing father in the name of the lord jesus christ amen <laughs>